And you know, those of you in the room right now that's been coming here right before we cross, you'll remember this building. And then years from now, however many years from now, we, we show more over there, you'll say, I was there when that happened. And it means, it mean a lot to you. Well, this, the Lord had me, I told Robbie to get this staff and because when we did that Jericho march around this property, I reached, the Lord said, get the, pick up that staff, that stick. And I picked it up. This is it. And I walked around the property with it just like that. Seven times. Dina was out here that day too. And I walked around seven times with it. And then when I got through walking around it, the Lord said, now, take that staff and lean it up against the side of the building, right out here by, behind that sign. He said, lean it up against the building, just like that. And he said, and it will hold this building until you get it. And I said, hmm. So I leaned it up against the building. There was no way we could get this building. And you, you heard the miracle of how we got it. Well, I leaned it up against the building, and things would get tough. And we couldn't seem to be breaking through. And the Lord would speak to me in the car, and he said, go by, your staff has fallen down. And I'd come by, and sure enough, it'd be laying on the ground. I'd pick it up, lean it back up against the building, and it'd start again. Everything would start again. You know, and he said, now, when you close on that building and you sign the papers and everything's done, he said, I want you to go by, and he told me where to go by, get some clear varnish, and, and cover that stick so that it never rots. Hang it up in your office and for years and years to come, take it down from time to time so other people can see what happened. And so that's the very stick. That's the very staff right there. And um, the Lord will always give you something. See, you do what you know practical. The scripture says that, uh, you know, the horse is is dressed for battle, but it's a vain thing to put your trust in it. Your trust is in the Lord. So, when I didn't know what else to do, the Lord would give me something, the staff. And then he said, I want you to go make a rock. And John and, and me went up in the backyard and made a little form. I went and bought some plaster, and I poured this rock. Just poured this thing, put a rope in it where you could hold it, hang it up. And then when it dried, I carved into it, or however I did it, I carved into it Amos 9, 15. And it's hanging right there by that camera on the wall. It's been there ever since. And no matter what, when everything looked its bleakest, I would come in and put my hand on that rock. And I would always say, all of us did, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful facility, this beautiful paid-for facility. I'm talking about this building. And right down under that rock, you don't know how many times I've laid on my face right there. And thank God for it. So you're standing in a miracle. And even if you ain't got anything to do with, God will give you something supernatural to tie to your natural to give it the power to take it over does that make sense to you never underestimate the prophetic because God said before it was he said and it was and he's always speaking into the future and if you don't have the money whatever you don't have remember He'll give you something supernatural to do that will release your faith for the future. And it will carry your natural. And it will complete the deficits you have. And it will take it right over to the other side. And then the day comes, you'll show your staff to everybody, whatever that staff may be. Hallelujah.
So that's my story. And the Lord said, anytime, he said, I want you to take that staff and tell the story. So from time to time, I do it. And today seemed like a good day to do that. Amen. God is absolutely good. He will never fail you. He'll never forsake you. I was going to tell my meal barrel story about my, was it my left pocket? And, and, but Robin told it so you know what happened. I wouldn't look at it. I didn't look at it. I was, you know, I worked in here with that, my old uh, Vietnam, uh, um, yeah, it was, wasn't the jacket, it was my, um, you know, my, like my pea coat, but it was a, Somebody help me. Anyway, I worked in here with that. It'd be so cold. And, and no, I wasn't in Vietnam, but I had, I had the coat. And I'd reach in there and pull out the meal barrel. But all my family was military, most all of them. And uh, my uncle was a screaming eagle and and, uh, you know, my family, just, and Robin's family. So we are big military people. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> and the only reason I wasn't there, I think, is because I was caught between ages. But anyway, the meal barrel he gave me, the rock he gave me, the staff he gave me, and all of our deficits in our natural the supernatural was joined to it and completed the deficit. And now we're standing on the other side. And there ain't no banks laughing at us no more. There ain't nobody saying anything. They, they want to be a part of everything we're doing. And we won't let them. And uh, only what we want them to do. And, uh, they, you know, one of them said, you know, you, you, can't, you can't have this certain kind of credit card. And so the president of the whole branch is around this whole part of the state called in and said, oh, yes, they can. Oh, yes, they can. And uh, because the Lord means to show himself to the world right now. And he's doing it everywhere, and he'll do it at your house, too. He will do it at your house. Begin to look for the supernatural to join to the natural. And it will complete your deficit and pull you over to the other side. Now, come on. Hallelujah. And this is what wicked regimes are fighting against. This is what they think they have the power to, to overcome. But they don't realize the supernatural has already been released. And the lion has roared. And they don't have any clue that they have no defense against what's coming. And it's going to come over this side, complete our deficit, pull us over to the other side. Hallelujah. And that's where it's going to go. So get ready to prosper. Get ready to go over the top. Hallelujah. God takes simple things, does he not? Very simple things. Get your hair in the wind, says the Lord. Get your hair in the wind and start running. Run. Run your race. Run with a smile. Run with a shout. Run with joy. Run with a leap. Run, says the Lord, for this is a time I want you to be a part of everything I'm doing. Go ahead and be a part and identify with me, says the Lord God, and I will identify with you and the world will see that you and I are together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha 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 
For now, you are going to see why Kenneth Hagin laughed. You are going to see what was at the end of his laugh. For he saw into the future. And he saw into a brighter time. And a brighter day. And a successful day. When the body of Christ walked in power. And anointing. And authority. Now you're going to get to laugh like he laughed. So go ahead and start by faith. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hand me my, my pad. I thought I was going to get, I thought I would read this yesterday. But the Lord said, read it today. It will be, it will sound different. But it will be for you to look forward to something else happening around you. If that makes sense. Listen to what the Lord said to me, September 17th, 2022. It was a prophecy. I was sitting on the seventh floor of a hotel in the room looking out the window over the city. Never forget it, I was looking over the city of Omaha. And I'm just looking out there. And I'm forever listening to the Lord, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I, I, I sleep with my notebooks. I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm wanting to hear His sweet voice all the time. If you ever hear Him talk, it's not like anything else. Yes. Yes. Now, just hold on a moment. Let's put this right here just a minute. And we're going to hang that just like a coat right here because we will need to wear this in a few minutes. I saw this, these swarms, there was swarms, Mark, of birds that began to just fly in swarms around. I don't even know if that's the proper name for a, a flock of birds, but it looked like swarms that we would say in Alabama, swarms of birds. And the Lord began to speak to me, and I knew this. He said, Behold, the birds of the air are already gathering for a great feast. For the demonic spirit that their evil forces work with are now gathering to turn on them and devour them. They are gathered now in swarms. Are you ready? No, you are not ready. For when the lion, for when the lion slayeth, for what the lion slayeth, no, for when the lion slayeth, the birds will devour. For all of your harvest is as the harvest of Ahab and Jezebel. Now you realize who he's talking to. Yes. Go, birds of the air, in Jesus' name. Go, your feast awaits you in the camp of the wicked. For in the night one will not awake to see the sun, and in the sun one will not make it to see the night. Behold, when... Behold, whom the lion slayeth, the birds will eat. 
And one who is called the president has come to the end of his time. I see a coffin, but not yet. And that's the word I couldn't read. It didn't say when, it said whom the lion slayeth. The birds will eat. Then I heard this. America is as Nebuchadnezzar. And has lost its mind for seven years. But when its hair becomes as eagle feathers. And its nails as bird claws. I speak of the symbol of this nation. Then it will acknowledge the God of heaven and return to, the, to its right mind. And this is what I heard yesterday, yes, yesterday. And I'll never forget it. When he speaks, you just, when he speaks this way, you're just stopped in your tracks. And he starts talking. And this, the birds have gathered for a feast now. And this is what they have to look forward to. Those who sought to destroy a covenant nation. Those who sought to destroy covenant people around the world. For the Lord told me this. He said we have in the war of independence. We had France and Spain to seek an alliance with. He said but. We have no such options, see, now. We have nowhere to go. He said it this way, if I have it at hand. He said, in the day of the great war of independence, we could reach out to France and Spain for an alliance. This is not the case now. There is now only one place to appeal to. And that is to heaven. So we have appealed to heaven. And he has answered. Behold the birds gather for a feast. Whom the lion slayeth. The birds will eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have something here. But I, I thought I would give that, and the Lord said, you can give that today. So now it's out there. And you, somebody will, will critique every word and say, but why did you say when, here, when, there? I couldn't read my writing. You couldn't either if I showed it to you. <laughs> to ask my family. <laughs> yeah, I better not tell that. I, I used to, you know, in B.C. days, I used to could do my first grader brother-in-law's homework for him because they couldn't tell the difference in our writing. <laughs> That's the truth. Remember that? Was he first grade then? Third grade. Well, I graduated some. <laughs> uh, don't do that. That was wrong, but I wasn't saved. I wasn't living for the Lord. But anyway, I wanted to give you that encouragement. That's a word of encouragement to God's people all over the world. It's a word of woe to those who are causing the pain. Behold, it has begun. Hallelujah. Before we show, um, I haven't even saw, John said, you haven't even saw this. And I said, no, but I trust you. So, <laughs> but we're going to get ready and receive our tithes and offerings this morning. I, I forgot that. And uh, you see, we, um, 
when when you're thinking about about other things and people you know a lot of people say well you don't and no we do not because that is a part of worship we do not want to forget that and um i know some of you saw the um how important it is to sow your seed and be on time those that watch the uh, uh open the heavens conference yesterday i was praying and asking the lord what to give and uh the night before and i couldn't get my phone to respond and because i I was given personally and given from the ministry but i couldn't get my phone to respond for my personal giving and i was trying to get amber to help me because those of you know i mean i was sitting there on the front row trying to give my my offering and i didn't have time to write a check i didn't even see nobody in the aisle to even write a check to give and you're sitting there and you're trying to do it on your phone and you're like God, I don't want to get aggravated, but I could take this phone and throw it right now because I can't even I can't even give, and that wouldn't be good because I'm on the front row and I'm pretty pretty sure somebody would see it. So I just stuck my phone back in my purse and I thought I'll do it when I get back to the room. But I don't like to do that because I want to do I want to be given in the in the anointing at that time. I still like to write old fashioned checks. I I'm, I do. I I know people go, oh my gosh, you're so two thousands. But I I still like to write the check, and, and I like to place it in the offering and give that. You know what do you go? But you know, a lot of people for convenience, they like to take their phone and and go ahead and give. And that's great that we got all these ways to give now. But you know, my preference is still the old fashioned check. But I didn't have it to give. The Lord told me, I woke up that morning, yesterday morning, and he said, give this certain amount from the ministry. Well, I jumped up and gave my offering. I I got it to work. I did it on my own. I was so excited. Nobody was there to watch me, but I did it on my own. I was like, yeah. You know, walking around the hotel room, yeah. Nobody Nobody saw that but just me, so now I'm sharing it with you. But I, um... I wrote the check out, and he told me what to give, and I wrote it out, and so Robbie comes in that morning. We're getting ready to go, and I I show him because I've already written them out. I said, this is what the Lord said give, and he said, yeah, that's that's right on. And I said, okay. So I, I said, Lord, I've got to get this in. And so I got off the bus yesterday, and I ran in. Uh, the the building and I saw Pastor Brenda's sister Christy and she was walking down the the corridor there and I said I want to give this I said the Lord told us to give told me to give this and we want to sow this into the ministry and she said I'll get this in and I said thank you so much I said pray over us she said because she's about ready to do praise and worship she said oh yeah yeah she said we do we do and I said well thank the Lord so I got back to the room, and um, or, or to the green room where they took me. I don't know why they call it a green room. It's rarely ever green, but <laughs> you you go in. I went in. I'm serious. I don't know why I got the name. So I went into the room where they sent us at, and uh, somebody had had told me said uh, they were texting. Robin to see if he was off the bus or something. And I looked down and I had a text from Christy. I mean, and this was within 10 to 15 minutes of me giving the seed. And you didn't know. Now the world knows it, so I might as well tell it because I told it yesterday. We had put a contract on some land the ministry had, some, some acreage that was around the city that would benefit the city. And I, as well, I mean, of course, the ministry, but also benefit the whole city. But we were the secondary contract. And the other people had had a contract on it for a while. And But the Lord wanted the land. And so I looked down at my phone, and she texted me and said, the, their contract fell through, and we now have it. Twenty six acres that will benefit the city. 
And it's going to be huge. And God, only God. Now, you tell, wherever your feet, and this is something else. Oh, my Lord, let me tell this. When we first came over here, one night we were praying, and I don't remember, Dina, if you were here on that Tuesday night or not, but we started praying, and the Lord said, walk through the city. Now, this is after we've already moved over here. So we took off walking one night, and we walked around this city, and the Lord said, everywhere your feet goes, like Abraham, Start claiming it. Start calling it in. Start calling this city in. And we begin to do that. And I'm going to tell you what. The Lord is in the city. He is in the city. And warrior, it is. Warrior is a good place. And, and they were talking about warriors, warriors, warriors out at the open heavens and I, I text Krista because she was already out there and I said well a bus load of them is coming I said we're on our way and so that is how important to being obedient because before we sowed a seed at when we were at their ministry and before we even got this and when the Lord directed us other places too to sow but the Lord said sow this now we're just taking a tour of, of their facility and all of a sudden the Lord said to sow this and we stopped and said we're sowing this amount and Pastor Hank began to pray and he began to prophesy over us and he said you will have that building and, and I'll, I don't even know if anybody got it on a phone it was happening so quick and so the Lord said to sow that seed and that is how important it is to be have your seed on time and, and be in 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 the, the be obedient and be in that that window uh, of anointing that time that you're that the Lord is speaking to you to give at that certain time and yesterday he said tell them because when I got the text he said that's an accelerated harvest an accelerated harvest and that's what is happening right now your harvest is being accelerated to you so today, when you're going to sow your seed, your tithes, your offering, no, you call on that because it. What did, if you're a part of this ministry? When we sowed yesterday, you were a part of that also, yeah. and so your harvest is being accelerated. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, and then you said that that our partners, our partners, it's. I don't know if our partners know this, but Amber and I was talking about everyone yesterday and on the way back, and, and our partners are loved. You, you don't know how precious you are. You're, you're, you're just, you're loved. I, you know, I love people, period. I mean, just, I, I love all people. I just love people. All shapes, sizes. I mean, I just love to meet people up north, down south, out west, back east. I mean, it doesn't matter. Other nations. But our partners. You know, I, yes, it's in my, my soft bag, I think, that letter. It's a little letter in the flap. And people, you have every right. Wherever we prosper, wherever this ministry prospers, it's because you are part of it. All of you. So call on the same prosperity. Call on the same thing. That the Lord, that you are representative of the same thing wherever you live, wherever you are. That's, that's really unusual for people to think about. But God thinks of his whole body. Yeah. It's not just one person. That's right. Did you realize that if you give an offering, remember, well, you don't remember it, but you've read it, where the, the, the widow with the two mites came up and gave, and Jesus was watching the offering. 
He gave his attention to what was given. Now you think about that. There's a couple times that, that people turn God, you know, when, when the Lord got off the boat, you know, that time after the madman of Gadara thing and he got off the boat. When he did, he was going to Jay Iris' house. Everybody was thronging him, thronging him, thronging him. That means they're all pulling on him. But all of a sudden, he turned and followed Jay Iris. And then while he was headed to Jay Iris' house, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his tallit. And he stopped and turned around again. It was people using their faith was directing his ministry. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I, he put his, Jesus put his ministry in the hands of your faith. He put his ministry in, our, in the hands of our faith. He didn't just give his life that you could be saved from hell. He gave his very life, everything, so that you and I could have, we could be the ones that handle his ministry. And it, he put ev all of his power, all of his word, everything within the hands of our very faith. And it was those two people that were controlling his ministry that day, not the throngs. And so he's put it in our, the hands of our faith. Yes. And so your, when that woman was giving the two mites, and Jesus watched the offering, people get all bent out of shape. Oh, you just talk about somebody giving, watching the give. He sat there and watched the box. Nowadays, they'd have said, look at that preacher. Look at that preacher staring, salivating over that box. There was God himself watching it. He was looking for something different. Because what he said was, was this. He said, this poor widow has gave more than everybody there. He said, because they gave, because they could give. They just gave big amounts. But her, out of her need, gave all that she had. He said, so she's given more than they've given. Well, what does that mean? Just because she, she was a pitiful, poor widow? No. What it means is, is he looks at all of us as one person, one body. If she's obedient and they're not, they're just dumping money in the box. But they didn't have any obedience in what they were doing. They weren't being led to do it. But she was. And she gave out of her leading. So when you get out of, give out of what God told you to give, yeah. no matter the amount, that's not the thing. It's the obedience of it. When you're obedient, the whole offering is accredited to you personally. All of it, whatever ends up in those plates or boxes or bags uh, is credited to the one Everyone who was obedient is accredited by God in heaven as giving all of it. We just, that's just beyond us in our natural minds. But in heaven, this thing is deep. Did you know in heaven, if you say down here, thank the Lord, in heaven angels go, did you hear that? They, thought, they thanked the great Lord. Oh, it's credit to them in heaven. Write it down. They thanked him today. You have no idea how it resounds in heaven. And when one sinner repents, all of the angels just stop and they look and say, My, Look, they've turned to our God. It's so credited. And when you're obedient like the little widow woman with the two mites, she was just obedient. All of heaven took notice. And Jesus said, watch now, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see him do. And he said, she gave more than everybody. 
because his father in heaven said, she gave more than everybody. And it's accredited in heaven that she gave more than everybody. This is a deep thing. And the crucifixion and the resurrection is so deep. This is, this is just representative of one. Yeah, yeah, I will. This, this was handed to me. They said, we don't usually do this. But they just obviously didn't know me because I, you know, I, I, I keep things like this. And they brought it to me, and the little handwriting is precious. It, it's better than mine. <laughs> it is, look. But, but anyway, this is from a, a child named Sailor. I said, hi, I'm Sailor. How are you? <laughs> I said, my mom listens to you a lot. I like your music. It is really good. God bless you. Thank you for fighting for me. When my cat, Nathan, when purrs, we say he is speaking in tongues. Thank you so much, love sailor, to Robin. Jesus, two exclamation points and a smiley face. Then she drew me a precious picture. Thank you for fighting for me. How many, how many are counting on you to fight for them? Can't you hear them? They're not just talking to me. They're talking to every partner we have. Thank you for fighting for me. Everything you do, everything you give, everything that's done fights for the sailors of the world. If that's not precious to you, I don't know what, what it takes to be precious to you. But that's not just to me. They just put my name on it. That's every partner we have. This is why I can't sleep until I've prayed over our partners. And if I think I've... I've I, if I think I've missed a time to pray, I, I, don't, I can't stand that. I mean, Robin will tell you. I've got to pray over our partners. I've got to pray over them. So that's, you, you mentioned the note, that's to our partners. Can you see that? How many of you see what I'm saying? That's to the partners right there. That was written to every partner around the world. Because they're not just in this nation. They're precious partners all over the world. I guess all over the world. All over more of the world I've ever known. I wouldn't surprise me if any day somebody don't be a partner from Tibet. That wouldn't surprise me. But if you are... There's a Tibetan partner fighting for Sailor. Well, Sailor and all the sailors of the world, we will not quit. Hallelujah. I want to see them stand up. And when I get pictures from people, they send me pictures and you see children wearing coats or with their hand drawn patch on their shoulder and their staffs in their hands that's all to you they're showing that they're writing to you they just don't know you 
but I'm introducing them to you now and you to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today, as we give, that's what, you know, there's, there is a, um, a law that those who stay by the stuff gets the same reward as those who go out to battle. And so those who can't go the places that we're going, and you can't be there, but you can send us. You get the same reward as the ones who went. And so pull on that. Call on that. To receive that. You know, I pull on that with the, with the people that, ministries that I'm partners with. I haven't been able to go everywhere Brother Copeland's went. But I get the same reward because I've stayed by the stuff. And, and was able to send the ones to go. And so you, you call on that. Amen. Amen. So if you got your seed ready today, your, your tithes and offerings, we want to pray over them. Today we want to quote the word. I'm sure Krista's listening. This morning, or this, is it morning still? I don't know. I don't <laughs> Luke 6 38 give and it shall be given unto me good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give unto my bosom for with the same measure that I meet with all it shall be measured to me again do you believe that I believe it you know what believing it it means to Receive means to take it. So I take that. I take it in Jesus' name. Amen. Need to be aggressive with it. Just take it. Amen. Amen. And for the tither, oh my goodness. That's a club to be in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tither's rights. We declare today. You want to. So, there we go. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for my sake. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall my vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Do you believe that? I believe it and I take it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can come and, and give. Next Sunday you will be served. Hallelujah. Now, now be before we forget this, um, the, the coat we hung up right over here. Yes. The, the fulfillment of that coat was the victory of the prophecy I read you. Do you, do you understand when I said we're going to have to wear it right after I read this? So that's what the prophecy was. That's what the interpretation is. So, says the Lord, pick up the coat and wear the victory. For the victory has come to you. And the victory is to be worn close to your body and close to your life. For the Lord says, I am now handing you the victory. Put it on as if you put on a coat and walk in this great victory, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 